as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. Many countries have imposed quarantines or entry bans. We looked at some differences in capacity change patterns between countries due to the lag in time of imposing travel bans or closing borders. At the start of the pandemic, we saw China experience large reductions in total seat capacity, including domestic and international services, to only 50% left since February, compared to the same month in 2019. The situation improved marginally during March when 44% of seats were lost. China then resumed the domestic passenger flights in all cities except Wuhan after zero new cases were reported for several days. So we have seen April's schedule improved to around 20% down compared to the same time of last year. As one of the largest international hubs, Hong Kong was hit hardest in March, with 71% year-on-year declines as many destination countries closed their borders. Serum's scheduled data as of the 25th of March shows April is going to be tough as well, with seeds still down 60% year-on-year. The rest of the world didn't initially face so many headwinds until March when more stringent measures were imposed. US airlines were the first to suspend all international flights to and from China. It turned out the quick action helped mitigate the risk of being exposed to more disruptions with its large-scale travel. However, the reduction is still deepening in the UK, US and Oceanian countries. Airlines are first in line among the long supply chain of the aviation and the travel industry as a critical enabler of the global trade and the wealth. This sector needs assistance to avoid an entire collapse which would negatively impact the entire chain and the wider economy. Governments are acting quickly with various different support mechanisms which may have quicker implications and real differences in relieving airlines' liquidity pressure. Loan and loan guarantees or direct financial support provides the quickest and most meaningful help to airlines to address immediate cash flow issues. So these are grouped into the first category as the rescue mode support. The US government acted early providing 46 billion US dollars loan loan guarantees and 32 billion US dollars direct payroll grants to passenger and cargo carriers and other suppliers. This is probably the largest bailout scheme ever in the industry. Australia and New Zealand have both announced similar plans in providing quick and direct support to airlines. We've also seen the other category of support where tax payments and other service charges are waived or deferred. Presently, there is limited clarity in the announced policy in China, so it is not clear yet exactly how much airlines there will benefit. Some other countries or regions are also offering indirect support. Hong Kong offers a training fund to help boost the skills of airport employees on unpaid leave. China plans to increase investment in airport infrastructure. But none of these will address the airline's immediate problem in an effective manner. So we have grouped them into the third category termed recovery mode support. Other than government support, other stakeholders amongst the supply chain are also doing their bit to support, recognizing that we are all in this together. Airbus and Boeing are discussing deferred deliveries with airlines. Aircraft lessors are also showing forbearance over payments, typically granting up to three months rent holidays across a majority element of their airline customer bases. We have seen a couple of announced purchase and leaseback deals agreed by aircraft lessors since the pandemic, and we foresee more are coming. Airports and the suppliers although some are government-owned, 
have gone the extra mile to offer discounts or waivers in landing fees or navigation fees. Once the current chaos is abated, it will be time to think about the recovery scenario. But will it still look the same as the one prior to the COVID-19 crisis? We think it's questionable as many fundamental drivers have changed, including the global supply chain, unemployment rate by country and local and regional economies. There will be recovery, but the regional picture would change dramatically. Not every airline will survive the pandemic. There will inevitably be some rationalization, perhaps a more regulated environment for a while. Carriers that do make it through will probably enjoy less crowded skies. We'll keep monitoring and sharing our views on this.